Hello, I am David W. Parker. This is Programming Today I Learned Rails series. Today we're going to be looking at adding Redis and doing that via Sidekick. So Sidekick is the gem that we will be installing. Let us go ahead and look at our code. So actually, let's look at our demo first. We have our sign up here. You can still sign up as some user. And I'm going to go ahead and click register. It says confirm your email address. Let me open that real quick. That lives under temp letter opener. See, here's the one from just now. Rich, confirm, email address confirmed. You can go ahead and look in our logs here. You can see we enqueued action mailer to sidekick. And then over in our other terminal here, we have these action mailer delivery job done. Sidekick. So how does that all work? Let's go ahead and take a look. So the first thing is we have this sidekick gem. And it says simple, efficient background processing for Ruby. And of course, it supports Rails. And I kind of find the main repo to be lacking in terms of documentation. However, they have a lot to go into within the wiki. So they, he's gone over a ton of different things, and he has a lot of different information. So if you're really, really wanting to get into the nitty gritty, I highly recommend looking at the docs. They are good, but they are there's a lot to go over. So this is going to be kind of a very small introduction to this. So the main thing first is you need to have the prerequisite is have Redis installed. Next up, we're going to go ahead and throw gem sidekick into our gem file here, and then bundle install. And then once that's done, we're ready to go, ready to rock it off. So our proc file here, we're going to have a new command, bundle exec sidekick, and we're going to get concurrency of one with two different queues. And one will be the Redis queue for the default, one will be for the mailers. I'll explain that more in a moment. Our user, the only really change here is we have a new method called send device notification. And this allows us to hook into device and use the device mailer. And then we're going to go ahead and do, instead of this would normally be just that deliver, it's going to be deliver later. And that allows it to enqueue it and go into this Redis queue where work will be done in another process, background worker. The next thing that we need to do is in our application RB, we're going to add in our configuration block here, active job, queue adapter, and then let it know that Sidekick is going to be the one that's handling this. And that's really all you need on the initial level here. A couple other things that I have set which aren't relevant yet but will be in the future is I have a Sidekick as well as a Redis uh, in my config initializers. And each of these are going to be able to use to configure the client and server with some Redis URL. And so depending on who your Redis provider is, uh, whether it's yourself or some other external source. So for example, on Heroku, Redis is not built in. So we'll use Redis Cloud to set up our Redis there. And this just gives us uh, access to this Redis as well as configuring Sidekick for that environment. But that's it for this. We will continue to make sure things that need to happen in background processes, uh, such as emails, uh, where the user is expecting feedback immediately. We don't want to sit around waiting for some email to be sent. And then finally, oh, now the page is loading way, you know, a bunch of time later. So we're going to be using Redis and to enqueue those types of things to happen in a background job. One thing to note as well, as I said, if, we have this web instance, and then we have a worker instance. And what this will ultimately end up doing on, say, if you're on like Docker and you're using your own singular instance, this will just be fine. But if you're using it on Heroku, for instance, this will need to be a separate dyno from the web uh, dyno. And so this informs Heroku to have a worker dyno that is separate, and this is the command that should be run on it. So of course, there's going to be costs associated with having separate dynos. So you just need to uh, think about that as you are figuring it out. 
So that's it for this episode. If you go ahead and like and subscribe, that'd be fantastic. Support me on Patreon if you really like my content. And I'm always down with answering questions. And I want to give a big shout out to Steve and a big shout out to Tyler, my Patreons. And thank you so much.